We've all heard that those in the helping professions, such as counseling, social work, and nursing, are at a high risk for burnout. In education programs and training for many of these professions, burnout is discussed in depth and individuals are prompted to preemptively plan self-care methods to prevent and combat symptoms of burnout. Burnout is discussed as if it's an inevitable part of working in a helping profession, but is burnout a necessary part of doing meaningful work? My name is Dr. Jody, and I'm a registered psychologist with expertise in all things related to psychological health, wellness, and resilience. I'm also the CEO and founder of MyWorkplaceHealth.com, and I'm a national expert in psychological health and safety in the workplace. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the important contributors to burnout and how we can protect ourselves against it. Now, what do we mean when we're talking about work being meaningful? Researcher Michael Steger defines meaningful work as being work which creates a deep sense of personal fulfillment, as well as a meaningful and positive impact on the world. Now this all sounds great, doesn't it? And research does agree. People are happier, healthier, more engaged, more committed, and better performing when their work is meaningful to them. So why do these jobs often lead to burnout? Individuals typically engaging in this type of work are often very passionate, driven, committed, and have often chosen their profession for bigger and more important reasons than just a paycheck. This may lead individuals to often overextend themselves to the point that is harmful on their own physical and emotional health. For example, committed and passionate workers are often much more likely to pick up the slack, fill in gaps where work is necessary, and take on many other tasks that aren't necessarily part of their job and for which they're not necessarily compensated. Now this is a good thing in general, and certainly all of our work environments are going to require times where we all need to go above and beyond. But if this becomes more the norm and not the exception, this can deplete us physically and emotionally over time. Also, since helping professionals are often less motivated by money and choose their professions out of passion and drive to do good, the work environment factors may be such that excessive or unreasonable demands may be repeatedly made. And things such as reward and recognition for these efforts may be disproportionately low. All of this over time can lead to feelings of demoralization, moral distress, and eventually exhaustion and burnout. So how do we protect ourselves against these significant downsides of engaging in meaningful work? First, recognize that meaningful work can be a renewable resource, but not when only withdrawals are being made. If we consider the meaning that we put into our work as being a renewable resource that requires being recharged, we'll have a much better knowledge of our own limits. This can provide us with the language of understanding self-care and its importance. Our meaning requires replenishing like any renewable resource, so we must take the time to replenish it. Remember, it's not selfish to take breaks, to say no, to ask for a greater support, or even to step away from a job that has us constantly drawing on our resource of meaning, but doesn't give us the chance to replenish. Second, strive for work-life harmony. This is a very specific change from the idea of work-life balance. Now, work-life balance has us thinking about each of the separate areas of our lives that are important to us and putting them all in separate boxes in an attempt to create a balance between them. But it isn't always possible to separate these things, especially when we're working in the helping professions. Sometimes we get an urgent work call and we don't just stop caring because it's outside of our work hours. Striving for harmony involves finding a way for many aspects of our life to work together in a similar way an orchestra does. It allows us to be more flexible in achieving comfort in our lives by allowing us to focus more on work sometimes and more on other priorities like family other times. It doesn't force us to attempt to make everything work at once. 
This will often just make us feel bad for not being able to achieve balance, and that ultimately gets us nowhere. Third, be open to joining collective action. When we talk about burnout, we often end up talking about self-care, and there are a lot of aspects of working in a helping profession that can feel isolating. And many of the problems that lead to us feeling burnt out are not problems that we can manage on our own. So not only can joining together with trusted colleagues to discuss these situations be healing and therapeutic, but together we can develop accountability and support systems and networks. For example, making commitments to keep each other accountable on ensuring you're getting in regular exercise or making healthy food choices even when time demanded. We know from research that venting for the sake of venting does very little other than inflame our negative emotions. So keep the focus solution focused and helpful. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope that you found this video helpful. I'd love it if you took a moment to hit the like button, subscribe to our channels, and follow us on social media for more helpful tips.